praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me once again at Maranatha Fishing Channel. Today, we want to continue in our study. If you will remember, we have been studying some terms that are used in helping us to understand the end time events okay as you study eschatology remember what we said that eschatology is the study or eschatology is the doctrine of the end time is the doctrine of the final days and there are some vocabulary that will help us in understanding the end time particularly as we move towards this area of talking about time line so we've we've studied a couple of terms already and i'm not going to go through that please go back to the previous study if you need to review that today we want to answer a question what does the bible mean when the bible talk about the time of jacob's trouble the time of jacob's trouble we are going to read very soon jeremiah chapter 30 and we are going to look very briefly i mean this is actually a question that we have answered in a sort of ways but that is the question we are answering today what does it mean when the bible talks about the time of jacob's trouble as we study these terms like i said number one these are vocabulary we need to understand if we are really serious about understanding and studying the end time also this vocabulary help us to also understand the timeline they also help us to understand god's agenda god's calendar god's timeline for the end time now before we go into that very very briefly i just want to mention that in the study so far you will notice that i've mentioned side by side uh, Jewish eschatology and uh, the Christian eschatology. Now, you will remember that the there are so many religions in the world. Now, there are three major, what people call monotheistic religion in the world. That is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And I just want to mention very briefly here that when we talk about eschatology, so eschatology is not actually um, only um, peculiar to Christianity. Obviously, we've been talking about uh, Jewish eschatology. So Judaism have eschatological expectation. Christianity has eschatological teaching. Also, Islam has eschatological teaching. Now, I'm not really interested in what Islam say about eschatology, but I just thought I should mention it here that this field of understanding what is going to happen in end time is not peculiar to Christianity. Obviously, we know and we have we have been um, putting that that side by side that Christian Christian eschatology actually build upon. Jewish eschatology. So Christian eschatology is built upon Judaism, eschatology and Judaism. Now it throws light on it. It puts it in a proper timeline because Jewish eschatology was not aware of the Christian or the church age, I should say. So they were not, oftentimes Jewish eschatology also were not aware that the Messiah or did not take into account, let me put it that way, that the Messiah was going to come in two stages. Now, it's still a right eschatology, but Christian eschatology actually refocuses that and um, put into that the, the, the reality of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the eschatology in Islam is a different ball game entirely, which I'm not planning to do but i just want to mention this just in passing okay so i want to just mention that in passing that um the the muslims that islam also have its own eschatology and eschatology in islam is based around some major events now they have what they call the lesser 
or minor event and the major or the greater event and eschatology in islam is based around some major event and central to this major e event for muslims are three events and i'll just run through that number one is the return of muslims antichrist now i want you to be clear that when islam or islam talk about antichrist is quite different from what the bible or what the jewish eschatology and the christian eschatology uh, talk about antichrist now the jewish eschatology and the christian eschatology always always agree one explain the other one throw lines on the other one helps you to understand the other so jewish eschatology and christian eschatology are supplementary they are supplementary to each other now the muslim or islamic eschatology is quite different so in islam in eschatology of islam they have their own antichrist now they have islamic name for these um people or event which i'm not going to go through so so the eschatology of islam is built around this major event and three of that is number one the coming of the muslim antichrist also the return of the muslim jesus whom the muslim call isa again muslim jesus is absolutely different from christian jesus for example muslim jesus is not god muslim jesus is not the son of god muslim jesus did not die and resurrect from the dead so even though they call that individual jesus or isa in in islam it is absolutely different from jesus in christianity there are two different individuals there are two different characters you cannot resolve them you cannot make them the same but muslim eschatology i'm not here to talk about which one is which one Let, let's make it simple if islam want to hold on to isa and christian want to hold on to jesus they are two different individual it is just plain and simple now so the muslims eschatology built around the muslim antichrist and i'm i'm using that word muslim so that you will note that they are different from what we are talking about when we talk about um our eschatology so it's built around the muslim antichrist is built around the muslim jesus but more importantly for the muslim is a character that is called al mahdi al mahdi now i'm not sure whether i'm pro pronouncing that rightly that is the character that is the individual that is the muslim savior and that is the muslim messiah actually the muslim savior or the muslim messiah is different from isa and the center of islamic understanding of the end time or islamic eschatology is really really built around this character called al mahdi or the muslim savior or the muslim messiah that is going to come and unify the 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 the, the muslims okay so i just thought i should mention that that yes i am aware that the muslim or islam has its own eschatology but we are not talking about that is absolutely nothing like the eschatology that we are talking about so today like i mentioned earlier we are going to talk about the time of jacob's trouble what does it mean when the bible talk about the time of jacob's trouble i'm going to read from jeremiah chapter 30 from verse 1 i'm going to read all the way to we just stop somewhere in verse 9. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the day comes, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their father, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus said the Lord, 
we have had a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Okay? Now this is, I want you to pay a little bit closer attention here. So the Bible, the, this is the word of the Lord, that the Lord said, verse 5, For thus said the Lord, we have had a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, and see, whether a man does travel with a child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loin, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, there's a description for us of a very grievous, terrible time. The Bible used very strong word to describe this time. The Bible says that, call it a time of trembling, fear, not peace. The Bible describes it graphically as a man who has his hand on his loin and is in travail as Eve is giving back to a child. And the Bible says that the faces have become pale, the Bible says. So this tells us the pain, the depth of the distress of this period. And the Bible says, alas, for that day is great. And the Bible says that there shall be none like it. The Bible called this time the time of Jacob's trouble. But thank God, because the Bible says, but Jacob shall be saved out of that time. So there is a time that the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible says that the the pain, the distress, the persecution of those days will be great. And the Bible says that there will be none like it. Let's be clear. The Jewish people have passed through tremendous period of pain and distress and persecution and trouble and they've been killed. They've been they've passed through period that is unimaginable pain and grief that they've passed through. But the Bible says that all those experiences actually picture a time that is coming. I mean, when you think about what we've read about the Holocaust, when you think about what the Jews have suffered all across the world and history, even in our modern days, even what they are still passing through now. But the Bible says that all those are type, they, they are foreshadow of a time, of a period that is coming, that the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time of trouble. It's a time of distress. And the Bible says that that trouble and that distress will be so great that there has never been none like that day or those days. And there will be none like those days. But that they will be delivered. In other words, you remember what we said about the day of the Lord. So we talk, we, and we've been mentioning this now, we have a name pin on it. If you remember, I've been mentioning about this period that the Jews will have to pass through that will trigger the, the day of the Lord. It's the day of the Lord that will deliver the children of Israel, that will deliver Jacob out of this trouble. It is the day of the Lord that will deliver Jacob out of the hand of his oppressors. It is the day of the Lord that will come and judge the oppressors and the suppressors. But we need to understand that the Bible says, please listen, that yes, the Jews are returning back to their land, but they will be set up by the Antichrist for what the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? There will be a period of trouble. There will be a period of persecution. There will be a period of tribulation for Jacob. Now, Let's, let's try and explain a little bit of that word Jacob. Now, you remember that Jacob's name was changed to Israel, okay? And in prophecy, when you are reading about Israel and God uses Jacob's name, okay? 
Remember, the name of Jacob was was the name Jacob was bearing was when he was away from God, when he was a supplanter, because that is what Jacob means. He was a supplanter. He was a schemer. So when the Bible used the name Jacob for Israel, it's actually talking about the ethnic Israel, the apostate Israel, the unbelieving Israel. The, so, so when the Bible used the word Jacob's trouble here, it's talking about the trouble that the ethnic, not the believing Israel into which the church has been grafted. No, God never used the word Jacob for the believing Israel into which the church has been grafted. God never used the name Jacob for those group of people. When the Bible used the name Jacob, it's talking about the ethnic Israel, the Israel that is apostate, just like Jacob when he was a supplanter. But the Bible says that Israel will be saved, that God will revisit Israel, he will remember his covenant, and he will save Israel out of his trouble. So when the Bible talks about Jacob, it's talking about this ethnic Israel. Israel today, Israel as a nation, is an unbelieving nation. Okay, yes, they are, they are, they are now, thank God, they are more Messianic Christian in Israel today than ever before. But as a nation, they've rejected their Messiah. As a nation, they are unbelieving. Okay, and the Bible says that Jacob is going to pass through a period of intense trouble, through a period of intense tribulation, the type of which they've never witnessed before in their history. But the Bible says that in the middle, in the midst of this tribulation, in the midst of this trouble, the, their Messiah will come. They will turn to their Messiah and their Messiah will come and deliver them. Praise the Lord from their oppression. So the Bible call it a time of Jacob's trouble. So remember that that in the end time there there are specific revelation of things that will happen to the to the ethnic Israel or to Jacob that the Bible calls Jacob's trouble, and that it will trigger. The day of the Lord. The Bible says that, I will read verse 7 again. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass that in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and I will burst the bond. So the yoke and the bondage, the Messiah will come and he will break it into pieces. Israel will, re, will, will, will repent, they will return back to their Messiah, and, and God, and that will trigger the Messianic age that every Jew has been expecting. He said, for verse 8 again, for it shall come to pass in that they say the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke off your neck and I will burst the bond and stranger and stranger shall no more serve themselves of you. In other words, you will no more serve strangers, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, and I will raise up unto and I will raise up whom I will raise up. Let me read that verse now again. But they will serve the Lord their God. The Lord there is Jehovah, Yahweh. Okay, let's see. That, that's the right word to use, really. He said, They will serve the Lord. The Lord there is Yahweh. They will serve the Lord their God and David their king. That's the Messiah their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Let me read, let me still read down verse 10. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. And we can, we can go on and on and on and on. And, and this, this all, this prophecy feed into each other. Remember what we said. Indeed, Israel has passed through phases of tribulation, phases of distress, phases of 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 captivity. But the Bible says that a time is coming 
at the end we are talking about eschatology now a time will come that will climb us all this tribulation god has always been delivering israel in their tribulation going back all the way to the judges you remember how god will raise judges to do, deliver them from the midianites and all the Pili Philistines and all that, and even in our even in our contemporary history, God has always been there for His people. But we are talking about the climbers. Remember, the end time is all about climbers. The climax, the climbers of of the 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 the, um, the rule of darkness, the climbers of evil of sin, the climbers of righteousness, the climbers the climbers of the kingdom of darkness, and the climbers of the kingdom of God. God is going to wrap up his, his plan. He's going to wrap up his purpose for the church and for Israel. And then this will trigger the millennial reign of Christ, the messianic um, and age of Christ. Uh, and then into eternity, praise the Lord. When we, when we come into talking about timeline, we'll be discussing all this in detail. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you will see as we've studied that this time of Jacob's trouble we key in into what is commonly referred to at, as the 78th week of Daniel okay what we commonly call the seven years of tribulation now does the seven the whole seven years of tribulation equal this um, time of Jacob's trouble or is the time of Jacob's trouble the latter part of the seven years we will come to that when we come to talk about the seven years but what we know is that this time of Jacob's trouble is definitely going to take place during this seven um, year of tribulation okay and it's going to definitely be the one that will trigger towards the end of that uh, period the second coming of the Lord the day of the Lord and then that will trigger the millennial reign of Christ. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop there today. Thank you for joining me. Please join me next time as we study God's word. God bless you. Bye.